Hey guys, I'm Gaz from Gap Bus. I'm one of the instructors on the Expedition Leader Training Program. I'm just going to talk you through some of the kit that we need with you. Uh, you will have been issued a kit list which will have everything you need for the expedition. There will be separate videos for the whale section and for the stuff that you will need when you're in town and for the other activities that we do. But this is just going to talk you through the stuff that we bring into the jungle with us. Meanwhile, all your other things will be stored safely in town. Uh, first things first, nice large rucksack. Uh, this is an 85 litre and it's got one big top opening pouch with a couple of zip pouches on the top. And then the major thing you want to be looking for, nice, sturdy, structured, padded shoulder straps and again, a structured waistband. Make sure you get this fitted in the shop so that it's right for you. You do get male and female varieties, so try and get something that's going to last you. Two one litre water bottles, they're nice and sturdy and durable so they're not going to get broken or cracked in the jungle. Uh, I've got a few assorted lengths of paracord here, uh, it should say on the kit list to bring about 40 or 50 metres, something 4 to 6 mil will do you fine. The rest of mine is currently hanging my basher and hammock up, we'll look at that in a sec. Uh, I have some electrolyte tablets, good to keep yourself hydrated, replace any electrolytes and salts through the day and you can add that into your water to add a bit of flavour. I always carry a few cable ties and some duct tape just for any repairs you need to do on the move. I've got my fire kit here in a Tupperware box to waterproof it. In there I've got a couple of lighters, some waterproof matches and a couple of tea lights. A whistle with a piece of cord to keep it around my neck. You always have this on you in the jungle just in case you get a bit disoriented and need to call for help. Uh, some water shoes. Um, this is just so you can air your feet when you're washing. We want to try and keep them nice and dry where possible. I've got a small four inch fixed blade knife. I, I favour this over like a folding pen knife because any mechanisms can get clogged in the jungle. Also have my machete, you'll be issued this on arrival so don't worry about getting one of those. Notebook and pen and then some reading material. I keep these in a dry bag, keep them nice and safe because it does get pretty humid and damp out here. A mesh bag which is where I keep my dirty laundry just so that it's airing rather than festering in a wet uh, in a dry bag. Clothing wise I have one pair of quick drying outdoor trousers and I also am wearing my other pair. I only carry two pairs into the jungle, one to wear, one to wash and dry. And then again a quick drying sports top, very basic and I'm wearing the other one. A towel just to dry yourself off with and my clothing lives in a dry bag as well because you don't want to be walking into the jungle with wet clothes. Waterproof sewing kit again very basic I've just got needles thread and a couple of spare buttons in there. Wash kit I have toothbrush toothpaste some multivitamins biodegradable shampoo so that when you're washing in the jungle rivers you're not polluting mosquito repellent and then my foot care kit, I have antifungal talc to make sure that I'm not getting any infections on my feet. And then I also have moisturizer so that I'm not drying my feet too much with the talc. I've got my head torch and then a Tupperware box to keep it waterproofed. In there I also have spare batteries, another spare head torch and my compass. A waterproof power bank. Uh, just so you can keep all your electronics that you want to bring in with you nicely charged. And another Tupper, Tupperware box for keeping that waterproof along with the charger cables. Waterproof camera, also waterproof. Um, not too precious because it can suffer from the humidity, but again, if you've got a waterproof one like a GoPro or something, then you should be okay. An extra dry bag, this is what my sleep system lives in. Uh, we'll go through that in a sec, but again, that's pretty precious. You don't want to be sleeping in a wet hammock. Coffee mug, and then spoon and mess tin. Um, you can also use a frying pan or something similar, depending on what you want to use, but something that's going to be able to cook on a fire because you will be cooking individual meals like this. Moving on to the med kit. This is just my small personal med kit. You've got to have a list of this on the kit list of the things you'll need in there. So I've got a dry bag that it lives in. 
and then within that another pouch that I keep everything together. So I've got some tiger balm, it's good for any little niggles and mosquito bites, some zinc oxide tape and a bandage. I also carry a couple of ankle supports because I'm prone to rolling my ankles, so anything personal like that, make sure you bring it with you. Ibuprofen gel, uh, some diarrhea relief, hydrocortisone cream, another freeze gel for my ankle, <laughs> antiseptic wipes and plasters, uh, cold and flu medicine, a few different painkillers, uh, antifungal cream and some antiseptic cream. And then all of that at the moment is placed on top of a ground sheet which I keep underneath my hammock. You could either use, either use a ground sheet or a camping roll mat. So just talking through what I'm wearing, sun hat, it can get quite sunny here, it depends what camps we go to. You may also want to bring some sun cream. Got a non-pressure sports watch because timings are really important in the jungle. My quick drying sports top and then quick drying outdoor trousers and a nice secure belt. And then jungle boots. Uh, they're nice, rugged, strong leather boots with canvas upper part. They have quite good drainage through these little drainage holes down here. And nice, nice sturdy grip. It's a bit caked in mud at the moment, but it helps you grip in the really thick jungle mud. Moving on to my sleep system. So this is called a basher. Uh, I've got a three by three meter tarp and it just sits over the top of a ridge line, which is a piece of paracord running between your trees. And then I've got paracord guys just pegging it out on each corner. Inside here, we have my hammock. So it's a jungle hammock with an integrated mosquito net and a zip opening. That's held up by tree huggers, but you can use paracord or it might already be integrated into your hammock. Just make sure it's strong enough to hold the weight of the hammock without stretching and this one has pre-stitched loops so you don't have to do any tying you just carabiner it in and then the carabiner acts as a little break in the line so if it's raining the water will drip off rather than soaking the end of your hammock inside the hammock i have a sleeping bag liner it's just a thin cotton liner this is largely all that i sleep in because it can get quite muggy but also it can get a bit cold so then I have a one season sleeping bag. It's quite thin, really nice and weight, nice and lightweight and packs up really small. And then to sleep in, I just wear a pair of shorts, but again, it's per personal preference. Some people will wear um, like thermal layers or trousers, t-shirt, really depends on what you want to sleep in. So play around with that. And then down here we have my drying line where I have all my socks drying. It can be quite a lot of kit to buy. This isn't stuff that people just keep around. So the major things that you want to be investing in would be your rucksack, your boots and your sleep system. The rest of it is likely to get jungled as we say and just suffer a little bit from the conditions. So don't go forking out loads of money on things that aren't going to survive. If you have any other questions, you'll have the contact details of your instructor. So get in touch and look forward to seeing you in the jungle.